The costs of getting a house purchase wrong can be astronomical. You've saved up, often for years, to get a house deposit together, only to find that thousands of pounds need spending on your new property due to problems that you missed during the buying process. These are thousands of pounds that you probably don't have and you probably wouldn't have bought the house in the first place if you'd been aware of its true condition. In this video, we're laying out the key money-saving questions to ask at a property viewing, whether you're a current homeowner, first-time buyer, or buy-to-let investor that could save you thousands of pounds in maintenance and bills over the years. Let's check it out. Are you wanting to buy a property as a buy-to-let investment but don't know where to start? Check out the Find Me A Property page on moneyunshackled.com, our property sourcing service, finding the right property for your investment needs. Investors have the option of having the whole process of sourcing, buying and renting to tenants run for you, making the entire process as passive as it can get, but still producing excellent investment returns of potentially 20% plus. And check out this video next to see how much money you can make from buy to let. The big easy wins. When you're viewing any property, there are some big easy boxes you can tick to avoid buying a money trap. The first one is to look at the windows. If they are single glazed, this house should probably be avoided or the asking price negotiated down. The cost of modernizing the windows of an entire three bed house to double glazed UPVC runs upwards of 5,000 pounds. And if you felt inclined to future proof the property against rising energy costs, you would need to spend at least six and a half grand to get your house triple glazed. And having to replace the front and back doors with UPVC ones can set you back by another grand each. Next up is the roof. You need to find out when it was last replaced. For many houses, the answer will be never. You might want to pay for someone to go up there to check it out properly, preferably a tradesman who fixes roofs for a living. But if it's looking a bit worn, you could be in for a major bill in the coming years. The cost of replacing a roof averages five and a half grand. Plus, there's the cost of having to redecorate and replace furniture when your old roof develops its first leak. Along with these two basic checks, a top tip is to ask why the property is being sold. I've had answers before along the lines of, the current owner can't afford the upkeep. That should set off alarm bells. The cost of a refurb. A low house price often hides the cost of a refurbishment that will be needed. A fixer upper is a popular choice amongst first time buyers and investors where you buy a so called cheap house that needs a lot of work doing to modernise it. But people who do this are missing a trick. If you buy a house that already has at least a modern kitchen and bathroom, yes it might make the house more expensive to buy, but those costs are included within the sales price and can be mortgaged. Say you're buying a house with a 10% deposit. Any renovation work that was done by the previous owner means that for you, you're paying just an upfront outlay of 10% for those home improvements, with the rest being covered by your mortgage, compared to 100% if you were to pay for the work to be done after you'd bought. In fact, it would likely be less even than that due to the renovations being secondhand and not new. If the previous owner had spent 10 grand on a new kitchen, this would be unlikely to have added as much as 10 grand to the asking price of the house. And 10 grand is not an unrealistic cost as far as new kitchens go. According to a recent report by Rated People, 68% of Brits set out to tackle a kitchen renovation with a budget of under £4,000, while the average actual spend for a budget kitchen is £8,000. Just 11% of people start out meaning to spend £8,000 on their new kitchen, and this price can skyrocket to almost any number depending on the quality you're after. As for new bathrooms, the average cost of installing a new bathroom is six and a half grand, according to Victoria Plum. As well as the cost of future renovations, you also need to check that previous ones won't come back to bite you. Any work that's been done to the house in the past should be checked for confirmation that there was planning permission to do it where required. The current owner should provide you with this proof for any obvious extensions, removed walls or unusual layouts that you notice on your viewings. If unresolved prior to the sale, you will technically have to pay to put the house back to the condition it was in before the renovations, which obviously has the potential to run into the tens of thousands of pounds. Beware of new builds. There are a lot of upsides to buying a new build. In theory, there are fewer maintenance issues because every part of them is new and you get a place that feels like home from day one that you don't have to redecorate to paper over the previous owner's weird tastes. 
but buy a new build and you will have to pay the new build premium. This is the inflated market price that you have to pay for the privilege of buying new. Much like the second-hand car market, if you buy a house or a car that's been used before, it costs less than one that's had no previous owners. New builds are often built on the stingy side, with houses crammed in up against each other and so-called double bedrooms, which are actually just the size of cupboards. A young family might have outgrown their new build house within a few years, and then they may find that they are stuck with a property whose second-hand market value is less than what they paid for it new, even if the property market as a whole had been going up. And in any case, new builds rarely come finished as promised. It's difficult with new builds to know exactly what you'll end up with, as you would usually buy the house based on the show home before yours is even built. While I had many snags and other issues that needed fixing in my previous home, which was a new build, I didn't have to pay for them, but it was a significant drain on my time and patience. According to a study by one of the many parliamentary quangos, nearly 300 families a week are moving into shoddily built new build homes. Shockingly, 93% of new build buyers end up reporting problems to their builders, with 15,500 buyers a year being dissatisfied with the house they had been built. New build problems are meant to be fixed for free by the house builders, but horror stories abound about buyers who are still waiting for problems to be fixed months after purchase. Many choose to pay for the work themselves in the end, just to move on with their lives. One couple surveyed told of their experience on moving day of finding a cracked front door panel, a house full of dust, builders tools lying around and mouldy coffee cups. Their washing machine had been poorly fitted which meant it smashed their kitchen cupboards and kickboards on its first use and an uncapped pipe in the loft left the house smelling of poo. Gross. To cap it off, they said the shady builders that the new build company sent to remedy these issues caused more problems than they fixed, staining the carpets and breaking their sofa. Here's images of another new build's bathroom after a few months of use. Of course, these are isolated incidents, but only exist because the house is new and untested before you buy it. The great advantage, of course, of buying a second-hand property is that someone has been living in it for years and should hopefully have already fixed all the major teething issues. Energy efficiency. Unless you've been hiding under a rock, you'll know that the green movement is taking over politics in the UK and it's set to hit housing in a big way. Investors in buy-to-let properties are going to need them to have energy efficiency ratings of at least a C grade by 2030. And don't be surprised if similar rules are eventually put into place for ordinary homeowners too. You can check a house's energy efficiency rating by asking to see its EPC certificate. The estimated cost of increasing a house's energy efficiency to a higher grade is shown on the EPC certificate. It will offer recommendations such as getting insulation and making upgrades to the heating system. The costs could again run into the thousands of pounds. One of the biggest threats heading down the line for homeowners is the government's plan to outlaw gas boilers. The proposed replacement heating technology is something called a heat pump which at current market prices will cost you around £10,000, though the government has offered to pay for half of that cost. Thanks, government. But heat pumps aside, when buying a house, you're going to want to check the quality of the existing boiler. You need a good one that will last you for the next few years, even if they are eventually banned. A new build should already come with a good boiler, but older houses are a mixed bag. Check the water pressure by running a hot tap. You want pretty instant, hot, powerful water. Anything else suggests you might need to spend top dollar on a new boiler system. Buying a house that needs a new boiler is best avoided, or at least factored into your purchase price, as these could set you back by £900 for a budget model, £1,300 for a mid-range, and £2,500 for a premium model. And premium ones might be the ones to go for, as they tend to have less problems and run more efficiently over the long term. If you're finding this video useful, please take a second to hit the like and the subscribe buttons and you can now also show your support for the channel with the new super thanks button below. Finally, on energy efficiency, any house looking to survive the green revolution would benefit from having had the loft and the wall cavities insulated, which you can usually tell just by looking. If you're unsure what to look for, ask your surveyor. Occasionally, government grants pop up to help you to get this done for free, but again, it helps if it's already been done. The interior. The big expense to dodge when checking out a house's interior is signs of damp. Damp walls are not always obvious to the naked eye, especially on a whirlwind property viewing when your mind is full of other questions. 
but the costs of having to deal with a house with damp are again not something you want to have to deal with. I carry one of these little gizmos with me on every property viewing that I go to as part of my rental property business and it must have saved me thousands of pounds by letting me avoid houses with hidden damp problems. It detects the percentage of water in a wall. The cost of a damp proofing cost to fix the problem starts at around £750 per wall with the average job costing around two and a half grand. So is a bullet worth dodging? Be sure to factor in the cost of all the fixtures you'd need to replace once you've bought. Recarpeting an entire house, for example, with the same basic style throughout starts from around £1,000. So either buy a house that has nice carpets already or factor it into your offer price. Final checks. The council tax you end up paying for your house is a bit of a postcode lottery. Your house may not even be that expensive, but you may still have a disproportionately high council tax bill. Save yourself thousands over the years ahead by checking this first. Also, check the broadband and the mobile network coverage. If it's bad, this will be a major inconvenience for you as a homeowner. And if it's a buy-to-let property, you may struggle to find tenants. There's a load more checks of course, more than we could ever cover today, and we've put a link below the video to a really good checklist. But finally, a tip for saving thousands on the purchase price. Check how long the house has been on the market for. If it's been for sale for a long time, there is always a reason for that, and it will likely be one of two things. Either it's overpriced, or there's something wrong with the house. Either way, you need to know. If you've done all the other checks in this video, and there's nothing wrong with the property, it's probably overpriced, so you should feel empowered to put in an offer that's less than the asking price. The seller is probably asking more than the market is willing to pay, and you putting in an offer after months without action may spur them into letting you off a few grand. Question of the day, what other tips do you have to save thousands when buying a property? Join the conversation in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing in all things money, and if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyonshackle.com. See you next time.